Welcome back to Fujitsu World Tour London 2018, where we're continuing to bring you via Facebook Live the Insight by Vertical. So to recap, if you're a technologist working in manufacturing, all you have to do is go and seek out the manufacturing specific video. And we hope to furnish you with insight and advice on the challenges that are impacting your sector right now and the very conversations you should be having at board level. Next, we're talking utilities. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me this morning. Uh, with me, we've got Andrew Quayle from SGN, um, Ewan Burns um, from Thames Water, Johnny Vaughan, uh, lead for IoT, and disrupted um, ledger, distributed ledger, sorry. Um, Johnny, let's start with, with you. I'm really interested to understand um, where we're at with technology right now. I mean, it, there seems to be a theme coming out of Fujitsu World Tour that um, some organizations and businesses are further down the, the road of transforming, transforming their digital. Others are yet to look at it. Some are fearful of it and don't even want to address it. What are your thoughts? Where are we at? Yeah, so we're at a point now where technology is moving at such a rapid pace that now the barriers are actually cultural change and adoption, right? So all our legacy processes, the way we've done business in the past, the way that organizations have operated in the past is actually slowing down the rate of adoption. We can't adopt things like AI, blockchain, 5G technologies fast enough because they're evolving at such a rapid pace. So for here, it's a, as much a mindset shift and that is, is even more prevalent in things like public sector as well too, where you know, the, the focus is on end citizens and users very much so, and that focus slows down a lot of the technology changes. One of the themes that came out of um, two of the earlier interviews with security and, and hybrid IT was that um, there's an, an, an impact around business values, consumer values, employee values, and how we respond to that, that cultural challenge that, that's being presented. I know you've done some work with cities. Yeah surely those cultural challenges have got to go up a notch. They do, and a lot of the times when it comes to city design, it's less about the city councils and the, and the local authorities dictating to their citizens what should happen, and more about the ground-up approach. So how can citizens tell the authorities, this is what we really need? So take uh, you know, garbage collection, refuse collection. Um, that has stemmed from a lot of uh, feedback from citizens saying, actually, our garbage is sitting there, There's, or there are rats around. Is there a better way of doing this, a better way of collecting rubbish? And that's where cities are you know, deploying machine learning, data, and IoT sensors in order to find out when to pick up uh, you know, commercial and domestic waste faster rather than every, every second Monday or every second Tuesday, wherever that might, might be. So a lot of it is dr being driven through end users and how quickly they can you know, push their, their agenda through with technology. Andrew, what about you? I mean, I know technology, it's such a broad question, yeah. but with all the change we've got, how's it impacting SGM? Where are you yeah. guys at? I mean, jo Johnny's absolutely right. So we're a safety critical, risk averse, policy driven organisation that distributes gas to five and a half million homes. So, you know, taking leading edge disruptive technology is not something we're very good at, um, although we're getting a lot better. So I think the barriers are around policy, regulation, around culture rather than technology readiness. But we see lots of opportunity. We see lots of opportunity around physical robotics. We're using, using that a lot in our in-pipe inspection repair. Uh, that's reducing uh, disruption to customers. Um, we're seeing lots and lots of opportunity around the key themes of Internet of Things, the merging of operational technology with IT. That's uh, more and more coming into my domain. I see devices that are given to our employees, our engineers, has, has a sensor, has a data source that we can utilize as a business. So, but that changes uh, business models, it changes processes, which again in our organization, in our industry, are very tried and tested, steady eddy sort of uh, processes. So, so these, are, these are the challenges that we've got. Yeah. You and what about the differing challenge between business requirement, consumer requirement? I can imagine there's a whole myriad of technological demand there that you have to try and address as an organization. It's ex exceptionally difficult in the utility sector due to the vast scale of the problem, both geographically, vast number of assets. For Thames, the vast number of customers. And trying to find that line of sight from ITOT, as Andrew talks about, to impact and understand our environment, our assets, and bring the best benefit to the customer. Backing a single technology or a single methodology is going to be exceptionally hard for us. As Johnny spoke about as well, how quickly this space is emerging, developing and evolving, yet we're in an asset base that is in some cases 200 to 300 years old already, and at the current repair and replacement rates, we might have to leave some assets in place for 500 years. How do you deal with that problem with ITOT that's evolving every year to 18 months is a 
very interesting challenge for a CIO, CTO. And then how do we impact that through the complete customer life cycle through that period in a regulated utility is utterly fascinating. Data will be the key, but also technology and robotics, how we deploy them consistently and effectively be exceptionally tough. I mean, all, all three of you are talking about pretty costly and significant business cases and yeah, business challenges yeah. that you're addressing. I guess an obvious one that any C-suite would be looking at any executive leadership is, how do you prove the value of, of digital? How are you delivering an initial ROI that then enables leadership to say, crack on, deliver on all of these problems and, and deliver what you want to? That's got to be a big challenge. I think it's one of the biggest challenges is to make sure the C-suite and the board are entirely engaged. At Thames, they're absolutely fantastic. I sat with the chairman last week, with the board on Monday, with the exec committee through all this week on various challenges around technology investment, asset investment. So that's one aspect, making sure they're engaged and they understand what we're doing and the challenges from the field. We relate that all the way back to our operational environment, to the guys in the field carrying out the tasks, looking after the pumping station, looking after water treatment, and understand the customer and truly engage with the customer. Those are the things that we have to bring, bring line of sight from. So back to the question of how do you deploy something, I think you've got to find the right sweet spot, execute a trial, understand it, and then it's the classic thing that we talk about now about fast scale and fast fail. If it doesn't work, let's move on to the next thing, but make sure we understand what happened, why it didn't work, what we should do next, extract the learnings from it. Failure is its own success. You understand what to do next a little bit better but all the time make sure that the customer, our field force and the board are all on the same page. Agree with that, gentlemen? I, I do. I think we, we've got a, a very particular approach to dealing with innovation. I use the word digital and innovation interchangeably. For us, innovation is something very specific. Low technical readiness, high risk. So we segment that away from the rest of our sort of normal digital or IT development and investment. That requires different processes, it requires a different funding mechanism, it requires different people, actually. Um, you know, people talk about failing fast. You don't want gas engineers turning up to do a gas escape failing fast, okay? So we have to separate that away from our business. So I have to say a regulator needs to be commended for, for initiating the innovation funding that it does within, within our sector. Um, that has stimulated innovation, it has created and um, encouraged that sort of environment. And that's enabled us to really, really home in on some big, big challenges around the energy trilemma, decarbonisation, affordability of heat and energy, and sustainability, security of supply being the other key things. We, we wouldn't be addressing those as a business without ring-fencing innovation and getting funding specifically for things that might not work, things that might fail. Yeah. And the challenge here is that mm -hmm. ROI doesn't naturally lend itself to failure, right? So when we talk about innovating and failing fast, where does ROI fit into that? It doesn't because that's a poor ROI in that sense. So I think a key part of leadership is to understand that, yes, there is ROI on regular business process, but when it looks at innovation, especially long term, it's a much different proposition and a much different mindset when it comes to change and adoption. We're all talking about adoption of technologies that are constantly evolving, constantly changing, um, and will we'll shift. Um, and as businesses begin to shift and adapt and, and adjust to that, an ROI model can't be fixed in that sense. It can't always be about how quickly can I pay it off when your overarching challenge may be safety or mission criticality or availability of your services. How much inspiration do utility companies take from um, sector, other sectors, other industries? For example, retail's across the news at the moment. We know it's having a tough time on high street. A lot of businesses closing, it's suggested those organizations haven't been transforming their digital at the rate that the consumer wanted. Rivals have come along and, and, and taken market share. Are utility companies looking at that and thinking, what can we learn from this? How can we apply it to our business models? What do you think? Yeah, I think there are. Actually, one thing that utility companies are doing really well is, is adjusting their brand. Right, so, and I liken this to other um, sectors such as banking. So banking um, in the past has been, I've always been with this bank because it's always been the same and they've had my money for you know, 20, 30 years. And now with new sort of banking uh, players, the rise of open banking and to get more data, 
a lot of banks are realizing that we need to be a bit better with the way that we engage with our customers, present things like data about their spending habits, for example, and how we interact with them. And I've seen a lot with utility companies, the, the way they're using um, innovative tools, uh, data analytics, uh, you know, chatbots and so forth, they're changing the way that their customers begin to interact, changing the way that they reach out to their customers. So they're not just a, we are your only choice for supplier of energy or water or whatever that may be, but we want to be your preferred way and here's how we adjust. And I think that's, and that's banking have taken that from retail, right, and, and so forth. So the, the power of brand and the power of change that companies are going through because of technology, because of changing needs of customers is actually really powerful. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think customers' expectations are, are there whether you like it or not, and you have to meet them, okay? And, and the regulator and you know the people who run our company are aware of that and need to respond to that. So that means you need to interact, you need to operate differently. So, so I think that's that's definitely a, a, you know, a big driver for us. Um, yeah. What about Thames Water? I think we're getting better at understanding horizontal innovation, looking at other sectors. I think one of the really clear intents was my hire, I've worked in the military, in banking, in media, in construction, and bringing someone from the outside, inside, to run the innovation programs, to run research and development is a big signal for that. I'm a guided weapons expert, but why would you have one of those in a water company? I think that's a pretty stark signal that we want to think differently, we want to reach out to other industries, and find other ways of operating. I think getting closer to our fellow utilities and finding those horizontal ideas, but also stepping out and looking into completely different industries and finding those nuggets, those different ways of thinking and operating and just work through and be very respectful of our own intellectual capital. We've got guys who have been in our business for 40 years. So whilst you want to go and look outside, you've got to respect and understand that deep knowledge of our systems, our networks, our processes and how we got here. And it's that blend that will really catapult us forward in the next few years. And I think I think technology is a real enabler for that. So. Through, through partners that we work with, such as Fujitsu, we're able to introduce um, our peers, for example, our chief engineer in, in our gas network, to other organizations you would normally not talk to. So talking to Rolls-Royce about how they maintain um, engines, jet engines, is why would you do that? Because it's exactly the same process in terms of predictive maintenance. So, so I think we're, we're more and more looking at other organizations. And again, technology is a real sort of glue and a conduit to enable those sorts of discussions to go, not just between uh, Ewan's company and Ercom, there's clearly parallels between uh, a water network and a gas network, but, but all sorts of other organizations we wouldn't normally talk to at all. So collaboration and innovation yeah. is key, not yeah. just beyond mm. the buzzwords that you hear at events like this. Final question, gentlemen. Technologies that are going to impact your businesses most over the next two to three years. Johnny, start with you. What do you think it's going to be? Uh, so for me, AI and blockchain. Uh, AI because it allows us to... So if robotics allows us to... Um, you know, augment uh, unskilled labor, AI allows us to augment skilled labor. So for us, you know, changing uh, and speeding up the way that we do data analytics, looking at raw and structured data is, is huge, absolutely massive. Uh, blockchain as, a, as an undercurrent aspect, as a way of underpinning things like document verification, identity, um, it just allows greater efficiencies but the challenges there are even greater because both of those are, have also the, some of the biggest cultural challenges, cultural adoption challenges within an organization as well too. So in an asset intensive business, which is what we are, it's the merging of operational technology and IT, which is, which is IoT, um, but you have to utilize that data. So any form of machine learning, artificial intelligence, utilizing that data, um, those, those two key th themes for us, I think are, they can result in game changing um, uh, business models and how we actually operate and run our gas network. Yeah. I don't think there's one answer to that question. But as the guys talk about the data and the AI, it's how we use the data we do have, understand that better and use it. And we've got to be careful not to suggest that because the data isn't perfect, we can't use it. We've got to take a datum and work forward from it. But if we can unlock more data and get better and more granular data, that is going to unlock real business benefit, customer benefit, understand our workforce, understand our assets so much better than we ever, ever have before. I think the word of caution I always offer is never forget the operational environment. Never forget what's happening out there for real, with real people are still going to be deployed in our streets, maintaining and operating our networks for a very, very long time to come. But let's harness that as well and make them better. Brilliant, great insight, gentlemen. Thanks for your time. Hopefully that sparked some thought for you. Now, if you've got questions, 
for any of the, the, the three guys that stood to my right, or indeed you want to understand how they've got about collaborating and innovating within utilities, drop us a note on our social media channel and we're, we'll set those conversations up for you. Once again, thank you for your time today. Plenty more to come from Fujitsu World Tour. We've still got to explore retail. We've still got to look at finance and we're going to take another look at security. More to come.